Math 171, Module 1, Domain, Range, and Intervals. In this problem, we are given a graph, and we are asked to find the domain, range, and the intervals where fx is increasing and decreasing, as well as the end behavior. First, let's start with domain. To find the domain, what we want to do is list the possible x values going from the left to right. Let's begin with this first piece on the left, which I label piece A. Piece A begins with a left arrow. And if you see a left arrow, that means x is going to negative infinity, since negative infinity lies on the left side of the graph. So we can begin the domain with negative infinity. Now let's follow that piece from the left going to the right and see where it ends. It will end in this open circle that I'm boxing in now. Now the x value here we can read by drawing a dotted line down to the x-axis. It ends at negative 1. We're going to put a closed parentheses there. Anytime you have an open circle, that means you use parentheses. Anytime you have a closed circle, you would use a square bracket. Now let's move on to piece B, which is the middle piece. This piece begins where x equals negative 1, where I'm boxing in this open circle again. So we'll say negative 1 and put a parenthesis. Now we follow that piece from the left going toward the right, and the piece ends in a closed circle. Now this piece ends where x is equal to 1. We can see this if we draw a dotted line from the closed circle up to the x-axis. Now, because this is closed, we will put a square bracket on this right side. Now, let's move on to piece C. Piece C begins at this open circle. This is again where x equals 1. Because it is open, we will put a parenthesis, then say comma. Let's follow that piece toward the right and we see that this ends in a right arrow. Now this right arrow represents positive infinity. Therefore we can say that our domain for this piece goes from 1 to positive infinity. Note that positive infinity also has a parenthesis. Because infinity is not a number, it's not possible for it to be closed. Infinity is always open. Now let's put all of these three pieces together. We have, for piece A, negative infinity to negative 1. To show that there's another piece coming, we'll say union. Our next piece is negative 1 to 1 with a square bracket. Union, our final piece, 1 to infinity. Now that's not the final answer. There's one more thing we have to do. You may notice that you have a closed 1 in this position and an open one in this position. If you have both closed and open possible, the correct thing to do is to unite those two pieces. Here's how it should look. The first piece is still negative infinity to negative 1 in parentheses. Union, you'll put parentheses negative 1 like before, but because you have a closed one and an open one, you unite these two pieces and now just say negative 1 to infinity. We have now skipped over the 1 in both positions. We now can put them together and just have one piece that says negative 1 to infinity. And so this is our domain. Negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity. Now for the range. To find the range, we list the y values. And we're going to start at the bottom and work our way to the top. Let's start at the bottom piece here where this closed circle is. The y value in that position is negative 3. 
Let's take that and follow it up. The end of this piece is this open circle here. Now, its y value is negative 1. So we can begin by saying the range goes from negative 3 to negative 1. Since the negative 1 is open, it's going to be parentheses, but the negative 3 is closed, so we will modify that to a square bracket. Now we have another piece coming. You might notice that in between negative 1 here and 0 here, in this region where I'm drawing the line, the graph doesn't exist at all. So we have a skip before we get to the next piece. But let's skip upward. Remember, we are going from bottom to top. So from negative 1, we skip upward here to 0. And we can see that we have a line touching at 0. So we can say our next piece begins at 0. And since the line does touch the 0, we'll have a square bracket. Now, let's follow that piece to the right. If we follow it to the right, we end up at positive 1 at this position here. But if we follow it to the left, we can see that it keeps going up and up and up. Now that up arrow tells us that y is going to positive infinity. Anytime you see an up arrow, y will go up infinitely. So we're going to use the larger value. To the right, it went to positive 1. But to the left, it goes to infinity. Now, since infinity is bigger than 1, we'll use infinity. And so this will be our range. The bottom piece goes from negative 3 to negative 1. The top piece goes from 0 here to infinity, represented by the up arrow. Now we have another piece on the right that we haven't talked about in the range, but that's because the piece on the left has a much, much larger range. Piece C has a y value starting at 0 and going up to this asymptote, which would be at y equals 3. However, the piece over here on the right has an up arrow going to infinity, and so that's a lot bigger than 3 also. So there's no need to even look at the right piece. We already know the range will go from 0 to infinity. And this will be our range. Negative 3 to negative 1, union 0 to infinity. Now with a clean slide, let's find the intervals where fx is increasing and decreasing. To do this, we're going to again go from left to right. And we're going to see what y is doing. So let's first look to piece A. Starting from the left arrow, let's work our way across left to right. So as we go from left to right, we can see that the graph is moving downward if we are going from the perspective of left to right. Now this stops here where you see this minimum. And that minimum is right there at negative 2. And once again, the left arrow represents negative infinity. So we can say that our first interval of decreasing is going to be from negative infinity to negative 2. Now, when you're doing increasing and decreasing, make sure you always use parentheses. You will not need square brackets here. Now, from negative 2, let's continue on piece A. And as we go from left to right, it seems like the graph is going upward. That would be called increasing. So we can say our first interval of increase is negative 2 to negative 1, which is where this piece ends. Now let's move to piece B. We can see that this straight line, starting at negative 1 and going to positive 1, is going downward, if we're going from left to right. That is decreasing again. So we'll say our next interval of decrease will have to have a union, and we'll say it goes from negative 1 to positive 1. Remember, we're only writing the x values for our answer. 
Now when piece B ends, we go to piece C. Piece C starts here at zero, but as we go to the right, it looks like it's headed upward overall. It starts slowing down here at the end, but it's still slowly headed upward. Now we hit a right arrow, and remember that the right arrow represents positive infinity. So we're going to say that from one to infinity, the graph will be increasing. Place a union in the middle as well. So once again, I want to emphasize that we are only listing x values for our answer. But these x values tell us what y is doing. Now for the end behavior. Let's look to the left side of the graph. We don't care about what happens in the middle for end behavior. We're only looking over to the left side. So remember that left in Math 171 is written as x goes to negative infinity. And let's look at what y is doing. We have an up arrow. So up means positive infinity when we're talking about y. So we'll say as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. Now to look on the right, let's move to this arrow on the right side of the graph. So remember that if we're going to the right, the way we write that in Math 171 is x goes to positive infinity. That's what represents the right side. Let's look at what y is doing now. Now y seems like it's going closer and closer and closer to that dotted line. Now it will never cross that dotted line, but it will go very close to it. So since that dotted line is located here at y equals 3, we can say that y will go to 3. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to infinity. And as x goes to positive infinity, y goes directly to 3. Again, it doesn't ever touch 3. It just runs closer and closer and closer to it. 